Hi, my name is Matt, and I'm back today with more tips to help you enjoy the best of the West. So in this video, I'm gonna cover 10 things that you need to know if you're thinking about camping in Yellowstone. So the first thing is to understand what campgrounds are available. So within Yellowstone National Park, there are 12 campgrounds, and they have over 2,000 sites among those campgrounds. They are spread out all over the park. Some are reservable, and some are first come, first serve. Increasingly, more and more are moving over to reservable campgrounds. About half of them are run by Yellowstone National Park, meaning the Park Service, the National Park Service, and then about half of them are run by Zantera, which is a concessionaire of the National Park Service. So depending on which one you go with, you could be booking them on a different site. There are also many campgrounds outside of Yellowstone National Park. Most of these are run by the Forest Service, but there are plenty of private campgrounds as well, like KOAs and RV parks that are gonna have more amenities or larger sites for you. Popular places to stay here are near Gardner, Montana and near West Yellowstone, Montana. So West Yellowstone and Gardner are the two closest entrances to the park. And then a third popular place to stay outside of the park is between the East Entrance and Cody, Wyoming. Something to understand about Yellowstone National Park real quick is that it's big, and then in the middle, there's a road called the Grand Loop Road. Well, just after you enter the park, it takes a while just to get to the Grand Loop Road. All right, the next thing is the cost. National Park Service campgrounds are really affordable. Same with the Forest Service, actually. So either of those are typically gonna range between $20 a night and $40 a night. In Yellowstone, there's one campsite called Fishing Bridge RV, which only allows RVs or trailers. That's a little more expensive. That's a little over $80 a night. But those are amazing rates, especially considering how much lodging is in and around the park. Private campgrounds typically gonna cost you more, but they're usually gonna have more amenities or larger sites or something like that. So I'm not familiar with private campgrounds specifically around Yellowstone. We always stay in the park or nearby in a forest service site. Next, let's talk about what the campsites are like. So the park service campgrounds within Yellowstone are pretty small. The National Park Service is into small fr footprint stuff. And so they have a maximum RV length typically of 30 feet. Some campgrounds will have some campsites that are a little bit longer, but they're pretty rare and they would book up early, I'm sure. So when they talk about 30 foot length, what they're saying is if you have an RV, which is like a motorhome, that's a 30 foot length, obviously. If you have a truck and trailer, both of them have to be less than 30 feet. If you do get a pull through site, then combined, it's gonna have to be less than the, the pull through length. You have to kind of read it carefully when you get on there. The dimensions are different for every place, but the general rule is 30 feet limit. If you're staying in a tent, the sites are generally eight feet by eight feet, which I believe is a four person tent. Although we've stayed in Yellowstone before, I believe with more than four people in tented it and it wasn't a problem. But I believe the tent pads are only eight feet by eight feet. In each campground, they allow RVs and tents. So you have your choice there, except for Fishing Bridge RV Park. That is located on the east side of Yellowstone in grizzly bear country, so they only allow hard-sided trailers or RVs in that park. Typically, each campground also has group sites, which are good for usually up to like 14 or 16 people, something like that. And then they also have specific ADA compliant sites as well. One more note here on the campsites. Some people complain that the campsites at Yellowstone and in the national parks in general are just too smushed in there. You're too close to your neighbors. Personally, I haven't noticed this being a problem. Like we haven't been annoyed by this at all, but we have stayed in those forest service campgrounds outside of the park and they are more roomy and spacious. They are actually nicer campgrounds, but then you're farther away from the action. So we still would prefer to stay within the park if possible. Let's talk about amenities. Again, the national parks, they don't have too many amenities. They are pretty bare bones. So some of the campgrounds have hookups and some of them don't. I believe the ones that have hookups are probably mostly the Zantera ones, but just read carefully when you're looking at it. Some of them have pay showers and laundromats. Others don't. Some of them have dumping stations for your trailer or RV. Others don't. If you're staying in a campground that does not have a shower, or a dumping station. I believe you can go use another campground's shower or dumping station, but I think you have to pay a fee. Also, all the campgrounds sell firewood and it's preferred that you buy the firewood from either the campground 
or from somewhere right around the park. They want you buying the firewood from somewhere in that ecosystem because they don't want you bringing in firewood from other places because of pests and bugs that get into the trees and really wreak havoc on the forest. One final note here is don't plan on cell connection in the park. It's pretty much off the grid. You might be able to get it sometimes, but you cannot rely on cell connection in the park. Okay, if this video is helping you out at all, I really would appreciate it if you'd click that like button. Also, click subscribe if you want more of our videos showing up on your feed, or if you just wanna bookmark us for later, if you're thinking you're gonna be traveling out west and you just wanna revisit our channel to see what it is that we've covered. Okay, let's talk about reservations and how to book your campgrounds. So this is really important. So all the sites, as I mentioned, are either run by the National Park Service and Yellowstone, or they're run by Zantera, which is a concessionaire, a private company. Now the Yellowstone campsites used to pretty much all be first come first serve, but the demand for camping is so much now, people are planning their trips well in advance that they've moved those mostly over to a reservation system on recreation.gov. The Zantera sites, you have to go to a different website to book those, that's yellowstonelodges.com, I believe. The ones run by the Park Service, those open up six months in advance. And the ones run by Zantera open up, I believe, 13 months in advance. Zantera also runs lodging within the park, all the lodging in the park, and all the lodges open up 13 months in advance, and the campgrounds, I believe, open up at the same time. Cancellations do happen, so you can keep checking back often to find out if there are openings for the time that you're going there. Now, the next thing is first come, first serve. What to know about this? This is pretty important. So some of the sites are still first come, first serve. Most of these, though, are in smaller campgrounds, and they book up or they fill up way early in the day. So like I am hearing of people getting there around five or six in the morning to get in line so that when people wake up and they start checking out of their campgrounds, they're able to take their spot. Some of these campgrounds only have about 12 or 18 spots or something like that. So they're pretty hard to get actually. I wouldn't recommend it if you're traveling to Yellowstone, make sure you have reservations in advance. It's pretty hard to get one of these first come first serve spots. The Yellowstone National Park website has a site that shows you fill times. They call it fill times for when these first come first serve campgrounds fill up. The problem is if you're inside the park and you're trying to move over to another campground, campground that's first come first serve, you're not going to have cell connection to check the fill times. But one thing you could do is you could check this fill times webpage before you go on your vacation to see when those campsites are typically filling up. A quick word about the weather at uh, Yellowstone. So at night, it gets down into the 30s and 40s, even in the middle of summer, even in July and August. It's gonna be pretty cold at night, so you need to be prepared with some warm sleeping bags. Also, nighttime showers are quite common, and you might even get a snowstorm in the middle of the summer. That's how crazy it is there. A quick word on the camping season. So most campgrounds open up around May, May and they close around October. Yellowstone National Park starts to open up for the season in April and it takes them about two months to plow the hundreds of miles of roads that they have there. So the campgrounds kind of open up on a gradual basis when they've got them plowed out. And then they generally close late September or mid-October. A few general rules that you need to know about Yellowstone. So every site should have a campfire ring that you can build a campfire in. That's just fine. Although sometimes they're in a drought mode and they ha they ban the campfires. So just be aware of that. You need to store your food in your vehicle or in a bear box. All the campsites have bear boxes. So you cannot leave your food out on the camping table. This includes water and you can't leave it in your tent. So you have to lock up your food at night or when you leave your camp ground or you will get a ticket by a ranger and they monitor that closely because they don't want bears coming into these campsites. One question I get from people is can I sleep in my vehicle? The answer to that is yes as long as you have a campsite reservation but you can't just kind of sleep in your vehicle in a random parking lot in the park or on the side of the road or something like that. You have to have a campsite reserved. Quiet hours for the campgrounds are at 8 p.m to 8 a.m. So uh, they don't want you running any generators during that time or making a bunch of noise or playing music. So be considerate of your neighbors. The generators, by the way, some 
campgrounds allow generators and others don't, but again, you can only run them from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. The next thing to know about is the campfire programs. This is one of the highlights of camping in the national parks for us. We love the campfire programs. They're really well done and they're very professional. So the major campsites have amphitheaters in them. So usually I think about nine o'clock at night, maybe eight o'clock or nine o'clock at night, you just walk over to the amphitheater and you can get a seat and enjoy a presentation by a park ranger. Usually they'll have a screen there that they'll be showing slides on and they'll tell you stories about the park like how it progresses through the year or they might talk about wildlife or any number of other topics that they cover. Really professional good programs. Before I give my final suggestions here on this I just want to let you know that we have a playlist for Yellowstone. We have created many videos to help you travel to Yellowstone to help you know about the park to help you fall in love with the park even before you go there and to help you have a successful trip. So check that out. Finally, let me give you a couple of suggestions from our experience. I recommend staying in the park. If you can stay within the national park, it is much better than staying outside of the park. Even though the campgrounds might be a little nicer outside of the park, if you're going to Yellowstone for the first time, I would say stay in the park because what it does is it avoids the need to enter the park every day and the lines can be really long just to enter the park and then once you enter the park you have to drive a long way just to get to the grand loop road which is the main road that goes all the way around yellowstone so if you can stay in the park you're saving that process every single day it's going to save you a lot of driving and a lot of time waiting in line it's totally worth it in my opinion the second thing is aim for one of the middle campgrounds that are in between the loops this is madison norris or canyon campgrounds. These three campgrounds are located in between the upper loop and the lower loop, and they're much nicer to be able to use as a jumping off point for anywhere in the park. If you stay way up north at Mammoth, it can be a long drive to get all the way down around the lower loop and back in one day. You can do it, but it's a lot of driving. I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time, and in the meantime, go west, young traveler.